name's Mike here. Welcome to part two of how to persuade through emotional intelligence. In this part, we're going to talk about your personal inventory of emotions in a rather different way. You know, in reality, most of us experience a wide range of emotions, an extensive range of emotions during our lives. But ideally, you want to have such behavioral flexibility and to be so skillful that you can quickly and easily shift your mood, change your state in any context in a given moment. Because this will give you a huge advantage when you are faced with a situation where you need to be persuasive. You will literally have superior communication skills at your fingertips, at your disposal. You know, if you ask a person, would you sooner be in a negative state, such as frustrated, or a positive state, such as being happy, they will, of course, always choose the positive state, the positive emotion. But you know, today, so many people are caught up in negative emotions. Emotions such as anger and fear and sadness, guilt, hurt and conflict. But in spite of this, they can still succeed. But it does come at a cost and it can compromise your goals. So I want to look at a scale of emotions, a range of emotions, beginning at the very bottom, the least attractive, and working our way up to the top, where you will enjoy more success. And in fact, outstanding success. But they are a list of negative emotions. And the higher up the scale you go, not only will you succeed more and more, but you'll enjoy your life a lot more. You'll have so much more energy. And the more clearly you will be able to think and the better you will feel. And you will be able to produce and create the outcomes that you want. So let's look at this scale beginning at the very bottom, the least attractive emotions and work our way up. The first state and the least attractive is the state of apathy. Now, when a person is apathetic, they've basically given up. They make no effort any longer, they don't bother. Now, really, you can't go any low when it comes to achieving a goal if you feel this way. You've set the bar so low, you can just step over it. Now, as we step up, we come to grief. Now here we recognise the goal may be possible, but hey, not for me. Definitely not for me. So up we go and now we come to fear. And this becomes a little bit interesting now. There's a bit of a transition here because not only do we recognise and identify the goal is possible, we also accept it's possible for me. I can achieve this goal. But we also realise it will probably come with a high personal cost, perhaps a massive cost. The challenge may be too great, at least to accept it consistently. So we're reluctant and we often back off. We've got one more step and here we come to greed. And of course fear and greed are a one-two combination. Now as we step away from fear, we do enjoy more and more success. We are achieving our outcomes, we're getting great results. But you know, enough is never enough. We simply want more. And if we're not careful, we can go up here to anger. And the emotion of anger is very intense. But the focus is no longer on the goal. It's now squarely on those things that are preventing us, those obstacles, those barriers that stop us getting more. As we go higher, we come to the very top of the list very top of the scale, and that's the emotion of pride. Now pride says, look at me, I'm so successful, aren't I absolutely wonderful? And you even bow down, go on one knee to your own self-importance, but you can shoot yourself in the foot. Do you know, I must tell you that just recently, I went to the Melbourne Writers Festival and listened to the keynote address by Simon Callow, the actor and writer. And he spoke about Charles Dickens and Dickens' love of the theatre. Now, I'm a big fan of Dickens, and I've just reread Martin Chuzzlewit. And in Chuzzlewit, he describes one character, Jonas Chuzzlewit, who demonstrates all of these emotions as the story unfolds. He goes in and out, up and down of these states, and it ends up ultimately costing him dearly. So this has been around for a long time. An awful long time. Of course, writers like Dickens bring this out really very well. 
But you know, once you're stuck in pride, once you're, once you're so self-absorbed, once you're, you, you know, you, you're focused entirely on yourself, you have to be very careful before very long. You can slip down and start getting angry again at the obstacles and barriers that are in your way, stopping you becoming even a bigger person in your mind. And then you can get greedy, slip into greed. I want more and more and more. And you might get into fear. You start looking over your shoulder at what you might imagine people are trying to do to take away from you that you work so hard to achieve. And you can even feel grief at people trying to take away what you think you've got. And we can go in and out, up and down in the same way. So what can we do when we're facing this kind of negative emotion, this scale of emotions? in our lives on a daily basis. Well clearly we really want to be in positive states, in good, positive, attractive, uplifting states. I don't want to talk about three states in particular. The first one is courage, having the courage to keep going no matter what barriers are placed in front of you. The second one is acceptance, just accepting the outcome, accepting who you are no matter what the result. And best of all is that sense of peace, inner peace, where you can just naturally and easily always get your goal consistently. And that's a perfect place to be. Now I'm going to cover each of these emotions in part six. In the next part, part three, I'll be talking about your listening skills. And I've got to confess, this was an enormous challenge to me. But if I can do it, anybody can. So in the meantime, I hope you found this interesting and thank you very much for watching. Take care and look forward to speaking to you very soon. Cheerio for now.